Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, Anarim set up a wonderful celebration for both of our tribes for finally taking down the Walrus Deer. She's brought together both her own soldiers and Melody's Flames, though it might be for some slightly more nefarious purposes than one might expect. She's actually hoping that by giving them all of this food, by playing all of these games with them, Maybe they'll be willing to join her side of the battle. With more numbers, it should be much easier for her to finally take control of this island, just like her family always intended. Her enemies are currently fleeing deep into the mountain snow. She doesn't even really know that they're around anymore. So, for all intents and purposes, she probably figures that she has won. Right now, she's actually hoping for a daughter to be born in this nest. Not only would that help secure her legacy, but she thinks it will also secure the alliance between she and the Flames. She wants to marry away one of her daughters to the Flames themselves, and the hope is that we might even see the Heat body today, if we can manage to pass that down onto one of her daughters too. So let's have her go ahead and clear out some of the snow around here, as perhaps little June Poor misguided June sniffs around for those roots that he found before. I don't think he even realizes that he's currently stealing from the queen herself, but as he shovels out more snow and scoots on over here, he's probably going to have to learn to respect the queen quite quickly. If she returns to her stores for a little royal snack of her own, she is not going to be too happy with this guy. Let's bring Choopy over to his son, though because I believe Avo actually caught one of the bunnies on the last turn, and I want him to pick up the meat instead so these two still have time to start their little competition. They're kind of fighting for, I guess, attention from their mother right now. The one who catches the most bunnies in their time is supposed to be the one who's going to take control of their family in the end, to lead them on just in Anarim's image. So because that bunny didn't count for their competition, we're going to leave it for Chuby to pick up instead. And we'll see if maybe a little Tusk can sniff around for the bunnies. Oh, good, there are bunnies out here. Excellent, there are plenty of bunnies hopping around this place. You guys just have to make a suitable pathway so you can actually do some hunting. So we'll have Chuby leave his mate's side for now. He can scoot on over here and pick up that meat on the next turn. I'm sure that Tusk will really appreciate that his father is helping out. I wonder if there's even a little bit of bias here. I mean, honestly, of course Chupi would want to see his own son rise victorious in the end, but he's going to try to remain as impartial as possible so Anarim doesn't catch a whiff, because she only wants the strongest to take control of the family. And speaking of which, I would actually like for Fang to have another baby with her too. He's almost at the end of his lifespan, so even though he wasn't the one to take down the walrus deer, I think we'll still bring him back to her side and hopefully continue their family. We could have him just shovel out a little bit of the snow so their guests can get around easier, and then he can scoot his way right up to the side of the nest, so he'll get the chance to see the next little baby too. I wish we had a route that we could pick up with her, but it seems like everything is bare so she'll just have to spend her last turn right inside the permanent nest. And as for you, Jester, I did want him to make his way toward one of the hot springs, but a little bit closer to the royal nest if we can. It looks like he can't get there in this turn, so I guess some of the other creatures are going to have to warm him up. We'll scoot him right over here. Pineapple can maybe grab some more of those branches and then join his brother. He wants to make sure he's okay, of course. But he also wants to continue playing with Simber too, because I feel like these two have really grown close. I guess for now, Simber will just settle down in the hot springs and wait for his friend to return. We'll have him try his best to claw up those roots, but he's been more of a lazy soul for all his life, so it's not very surprising that he doesn't know how to get the food. But yeah, I wanted Jester to come over to the royal nest, because I feel like in Anarim's eyes, he's going to be the most important of the brothers. He's the only one who actually has the heat body and his inactive traits, so I wonder if maybe she could even sense that. 
maybe that's something that she would just inherently know, since she's so connected to the heat body as well. And do we have tons of bunnies back here still? Yes! Oh my goodness! The bunny guides are like, almost herding our creatures in this direction. It really makes sense considering. They're trying their best to continue in the paths of the explorers. But it is a dangerous place out here, and all of them are so frightened anyways from Maisie's stories. So they do need an extra little bit of nudging from the bunny guides. But let's have Stone jump his way to the front. I suppose we might as well have him lead the pack. He does have the hammer tail, so he is a little bit stronger than some of our other creatures. And he can even dig up plenty of those tasty roots. Yeah, we should probably have him focus on that side. We can have Fim do the hunting while our digging trunks dig up the roots along the way. That was one thing that our explorers couldn't really indulge in. But they have found something much more important than just a couple of scraps. We actually cracked open our very last glacier on the island in the last episode too. And I'm very, very interested in Kunukir. Thanks to his heat body, I'm thinking there must be a connection between him and Anarim. I'm actually wondering if maybe he was even part of her family. So as we have Madison turn back around to do a little bit of investigating, just to see who's poking around their territory, to figure out what that stampede is in the distance. We'll have Kunukir stay right here with Ramir, and he can share his story with her. So I do definitely believe that there's some sort of connection between him and Ramir. But I wonder if perhaps he was a little bit more sympathetic to their enemies. Maybe the reason why they found him out here all alone in the glacier isn't because he was banished like the rest of his family, but he was trying his best to lead the enemies away, somewhere safe on the other side of the mountain where they would never have to worry about Ramir and her reign of terror again. It would probably be hard for Macy in particular to accept that as the truth, but since she's not here, and since none of the other ancient creatures are, I guess nobody would really know if he's telling the truth or not. They would just have to believe him on his word alone. So let's see. If we bring a little messy back here to collect the meat for us, that should make it much easier for our creatures in the back to join us on the next turn. Then we'll have Clover sniff around for some more of those roots. He can actually scoot right up here and grab this one right underneath stone. Oh my gosh, though, the bunnies. They are absolutely everywhere. It is so crazy to see so many bunnies hopping around in the snow. I mean, our poor creatures can't even really keep track of them. Is Skitty going to be able to take them down? No, unfortunately she can't. She can pounce on one and try her best. Oh my gosh, it actually led her to a root instead. Well, we might as well collect that because it's worth so much more food than a little bunny would be. So thank you very much. Our bunny guides are still doing us right, it seems. I think we're going to leave Fim in the area too because I don't think he would want to leave his sister behind. So we'll have him stand on the stump for now. Just to scout around, I guess. Make sure there's nothing lurking out in the distance, since they don't really know what's waiting in their future just yet. But other than that, I think that should be the last of our turns. So let's return to Anarim and cross our fingers that we're finally going to see a daughter in the nest. Oh my goodness, the poor thing is completely covered in snow now. But she is a female. She is exactly what Anarim was hoping for. She looks absolutely fierce with Baryena Claws and Saber Fangs too, nobody is going to mess with her anytime soon. So as for Anarim's very first daughter, the next name on my list is Belle. So welcome to our tribe, little one. It seems as though you're going to make a very, very important little princess. She does have the heat body and her inactive traits too. So I suppose that means we could actually try to breed her with Jester. The only problem is, I think she does have a similar immunity gene. They both have immunity gene G, so it's not guaranteed their babies would be sick, but there is still the possibility. And I'm not really sure if Anarim would accept that weakness in her family. 
It's something for us to consider. But I am a little bit nervous about the fate of our babies. I suppose that's far off in the future anyways. For now, all they know is that she is Jester's betrothed. So let's finally scoot him on over into the hot springs. That way he should be nice and toasty warm. Oh, but there was a little root over there. Oh no, maybe we could have Pineapple dig that up for you then. And then he's going to have to try to claw his way back to his friend's side. This island is just so strange. The fact that the snow is still building up, even though it's not technically snowing out, makes this very, very tricky to maneuver, because you just don't know when your pathways are going to get blocked. But I guess we could bring Simber down here to pick up some more of those twigs. And not only will he be able to make some excellent little trinkets with pineapple, but we should be able to move Anarim to a brand new nest too. So let's scoot Fang over here. And on his very final day, let's cross our fingers that he'll get to have another baby. We'll have him breed with her. Oh, thank goodness. Right on the first try, too. So go ahead and clear out some more of the snow for us. We'll trample it down with those big claws of yours. As June continues to steal from the royal stores. Let's bring him over here to relax in the hot springs as well disrespecting the royal ness every step of the way. He probably doesn't know any better because his family wasn't really as strict, though then again I'm not sure if anybody can rival Anarim's strictness. So let's bring Avo toward the bunnies if we can. Yeah, they all seem to be situated over here, so maybe it's actually time for you to change your course. We'll have him clear out some of the snow, and then I'm sure that Tusk would try to jump straight in front of his brother, just to stop him from getting to the bunnies first. Though unfortunately that's the only move that he can really make, because I did notice that he's starting to get a little bit cold. That of course would be because he doesn't have the big body like Avo does, so it's actually going to be pretty difficult for him to go on this bunny hunting mission. Oh my gosh, and the bunnies are staying warm in that triangle formation too? It almost looks like they're having a little standoff with our creatures, doesn't it? We'll bring Choopy over here just to warm up his son for the moment, but then he's going to have to return to Anarim's side on the next turn. We want him to have a few more BBs too. So how are you guys doing back here? Still investigating those pathways, I'm sure. I'm still quite curious because I don't think we found what sort of creature was making them. You would think if it was a rogue male, they probably would have found our pack by now. Because Madison and Ramir have both been wandering alone, so I can't imagine that a rogue male is making these pathways. I suppose it could always be another walrus deer. They're pretty good at moving around all the snow too, so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled. Maybe we'll find a good source of food pretty soon. I think it's probably time that Triss and Fim leave the bunnies behind them, though, because it looks like they're both starting to get very, very cold. In fact, pretty much everybody in this family is freezing now. The poor things, the Melody just can't keep them safe. So it's a good thing that Madison is just around the bend, because we are going to need to find some way to warm them all up very, very quickly. Let's have her scoop up this bunny over here to bring to the other families. And I suppose we will have Stone be the first one to greet her. Oh, isn't he going to be so impressed? I mean, Madison is a very, very experienced explorer. So, considering how his family is struggling right now, she must seem like a dream to him. Let's have Clover pick up the bunny meat too. And then is there any way that we can scoot all of these family members together? We might have to have Macy return once more to the back of the line, just to keep these babies warm. And then I suppose we can try our best to clear out some of the snow, just to widen these pathways a little bit. But it's not really going to do us very much good. Yeah, Skitty's going to leave the bunny behind since she's too weak anyways. Her time would better be spent over here just warming up her family. We'll have Stone shovel out that one extra pit of snow. Oh, not again! Those surprise rocks are blocking poor Clover from getting any warmth. Well, hopefully he's going to be okay for just one more day. 
Even if we brought him over here, he still wouldn't be warm enough because he needs that third creature to warm him up from the other side. So I guess for now, just go ahead and sniff around for more roots. You know, there is actually quite a bit of food out here for you guys too, even over here where we found the glacier. So maybe this would be a good spot for us to set up a new home after all. Now that this family has all come together, I suppose they could also find their own royal nest to settle down at. Somewhere for them to truly build up as a home. And it might be fitting if the very first babies to be born are between our tiger and our little cheetah. Poor Kunu Kira is getting quite cold anyways. We do have some hot springs down here. So maybe it's about time that we have you guys start making a pathway toward those. Because goodness knows we are going to need them. It seems like Kunukir won't have enough energy on this turn anyways to settle down inside one. So let's just bring him over to this tree stump. Oh my gosh, where the bunny guides are just running amok. That way we can bring these two together so they can hopefully breed. Ramiria is getting rather close to the end of her lifespan so I just want to make sure that we'll have a baby between them. Now, she does have quite a few flaws in her genetics, the deformed paws and the blindness, but I'm really concerned about that infertile gene. So I think I'm going to focus on all of these other things later and just try my best to breed in the high fertility first. The fertility traits are really like the silent killers of our tribes as we've learned so many times before. It really stinks when a pair is on their very last day and they just can't have their final baby because their fertility is too low. Now as for their snouts, I wanted to fill her second slot with something special, maybe one of those prehistoric genes, because if we don't put anything in there, I'm pretty sure that all of their babies are going to have the derp snout. So just to try to breed that out as soon as possible, so it'll be easier to keep these in our genetics. Let's actually put the digging trunk into her slot. Since we figured that Kunukir was probably part of Anarim's family, I guess that would make more sense if their babies were born with that. Now, Kunukir, we could probably focus on the eyesight. He's a little bit more well off than Ramirez, so there's not too many flaws for us to be concerned with. The eyes and that high fertility will have to do for now. And then hopefully we can have her breed with him. Yeah, this is probably going to take quite a few tries, and that's why I wanted to get started on it as soon as possible. So I think all we have left over here is Jester inside his hot springs. We'll just have him go ahead and shovel out a little bit of the extra snow. Oh my gosh, why is it always the rocks? And then I think we should be ready to skip the day again. So let's see if Anarim is just as lucky as last time, and hopefully she has another little daughter in the nest. Yes, and this one is actually a little digging trunk baby. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Oh, and not only that, but she also has the heat body. Now, does she share an immunity gene? Yeah, I think that's because Jester and Anarim actually have the exact same immunities. So unfortunately, no matter what baby she has, it's always destined to have at least one immunity gene with Jester. That's what makes this heat body situation so tricky. But honestly, I think we are still going to risk it because the heat body would be so, so helpful on this mountain, especially with all of this new snow. Now, as for our new little digging trunk, the next name on my list is Fern. So welcome to our tribe too. Another grand warrior digging trunk, just like your mother. Actually, I think she's the most like her mother yet with those dark black ram horns on her head. She looks the most similar to her warlord mother. So can we bring Chupi back to the royal nest by any chance? I'm a little bit worried that he might be too far away. It's just all of that snow that's really bogging them down. Oh my goodness, but the bunny trio is still staring down our tribe mates. Can you guys reach in there? I know we have those roots, but I think we're going to bypass them. Really? Oh my gosh, another one of those rocks. It is always a surprise rocks that waste our turns. But now Evo has caught his very first bunny. So the score is currently one to zero. Let's have Tusk make his move next. Can he reach any of them? Oh no, they're just a little bit too far away. 
I mean, technically, if we could have him dive into those snow drifts, he could probably grab one. But it seems like it's a little bit too deep. He's being cautious, and rightfully so, because now he can snag one without even worrying. Oh, he could have snagged two of them if he only had an extra turn. Well, you guys are going to have to deal with collecting the food this time, because Choopy really needs to get back home. It's a tied score, though, and I'm sure that Choopy is going to take that knowledge right back to Anarim. She's probably going to be very, very impressed with her little ones. I suppose we could have Jester come up here to watch after the girls. That would be a good way to keep them safe, so we can still have Anarim come down here to clear out a path for me. She knows that Choopy has a little bit of trouble getting through all of this thick snow, and she doesn't want to lose one of her strongest partners entirely, especially after Fang just passed away too. I suppose Jester can do his part by shoveling out some more. Do you think that Belle would be particularly curious? I feel like she would want to jump out of the nest and explore, but she knows better right now. It's a little bit too cold, and we should probably stick to just warming Jester up. I guess if we had him scoot over here, we could bring the little baby up to the top of that peak. Yeah, I think she prefers this position over the nest. It makes her seem very, very majestic. She is powerful, and she knows it. Now, poor June, it looks like you may have actually gotten snowed in back here. And it's all because of your love for those roots. In fact, it looks like we could even have him scoot a little bit further back, on top of one of these stumps. He can grab this root way back here, literally stealing every last morsel that he can get his hands on. That's probably why Anarim left him out there in the snowdrifts, and I can't imagine that she's going to shovel his path anytime soon. Simber is a different story, though. We can have him scoot on over here, pick up the snow in front of Pineapple, so he can finally return to the hot springs once more. Honestly, I feel like these two are probably the best of friends. We can settle them down side by side so they can pick up some more of those branches. They're like the little artisans of the tribe in a way, crafting their jewelry for everybody to wear. Now I'm actually thinking that maybe Ramir should have her baby on this turn. So if we bring her over to the stump to plant down her nest, that might be our best course of action. I mean, it's not as if she is wanting for food out here. We could swipe up all of those bunnies, and we could have Kunukir scoot over here to pick up this bunny meat too, just so those pesky bluebirds don't end up swooping down and stealing it. We have so, so many family members making their way to the new home that I don't think he has to worry about going cold. As long as we move these creatures right, we should be able to warm him up again. Maybe Madison in particular is feeling a little bit concerned for his safety, so she mentioned it to these newcomers. And of course, Stone would do absolutely anything if it meant impressing Madison. So now Kunukir should be nice and warm, and hopefully he'll get the chance to see his very first baby on the next turn. Let's just make sure that we're bringing up the rear over here. Poor Messi, who is so close to the end of her days. At least she's keeping all of our strong warriors warm. And she knows if she keeps them safe, then they'll protect her babies when she passes. And speaking of which, look who has been left all out in the cold. Well, let's bring your mother over here so you can warm up a little bit too. So let's skip the day one last time. This time so we can see the very first baby of our wonderful explorer, our little white tigress. Oh my goodness. What on earth is this? Oh, that mask! She doesn't look anything like her parents with that mask on. What a difference! Oh my gosh, unfortunately she didn't really inherit any of the genes that we were hoping for. She has some really bad eyesight, she doesn't have the heat body, but all the same... I mean, she looks like an angry little badger to me. The crankiest of badger bananas, because the bananas always make it back to our tribe sooner or later. This is definitely not where I was expecting to see it, though. I think you have everybody surprised. So the next name on my list is Tota. Welcome to our tribe, little one. We'll see what sort of grand adventures are waiting in your future, too. I mean, considering her parents, 
she is pretty much destined for greatness. One grizzled, experienced explorer, and one so-called warlord with a heart of gold. So in the next episode, hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck with the heat body. Now that we have a couple more chances to pass it on, I'm really, really excited to see if Jester is going to be the very first one to give us our heat bodies. That would have to mean good things for their alliance, too, so I'm sure that Anarine would be pleased. As long as they don't end up sick, and as long as it gives us the chance to get to these new ports faster. Now that all the glaciers have been cleared, we do need to think about where we're going to go next. I'm leaning toward this island, because it should bring us back to some easier ones. And I'm assuming that that's going to allow us to go through the loop of mountains faster. But if you guys know otherwise, then please do let me know, because I think some quick island hopping is near in our future. It will be a little bit difficult to move the other side of our family back toward this side of the mountain, but at least it seems as though our little competition between Avo and Tusk is helping us clear our path. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!